Comment s'appelle la machine là Lolo. Lolo, ok. Hello and welcome. Today we will continue our trip out of Benin Republic into Nigeria. We will be traveling from Malamville in Benin to Kebi State in Nigeria. On this trip, we will visit some very important towns and rivers in this part of West Africa. We will visit Lolo Town, which is well known for commerce. We will also be stopping over at Agongo, well known for its fishing festivals. Please stay tuned. So, the first leg of this trip was from Lagos to Kotonou, from where I continued to Abome and then finally to Malamville. Today, I'll be traveling from Malamville back to Kebi State in Nigeria. I have just arrived in Lolo Town after a very long motorbike ride from Malamville. This town, just like Malamville, sits happily on the bank of the River Niger. I've observed one thing in West Africa. Some of the biggest markets sit right at the bank of the River Niger. The Onishamem market is a perfect example. Also, the Malamville International Market that we just visited is another example. Do you know any other markets in this part of West Africa that sits at the bank of the River Niger? Please, if you do, tell me on the comment section. So let's get back to the log. Is well known for trade. This famous market has been in existence since the 1800s and it's part of the biggest markets in this part of West Africa. Traders from different parts of Nigeria, Benin, Nigeria Republic, and so on come here to buy and sell. It's also on record that traders from Ghana and Mali also come to trade here in Lolo. Many thanks to River Niger, which makes all this possible. Unlike Malamville, where the River Niger is mainly influencing agriculture, right here in Lolo, this river influences commerce the more. According to some of the traders in this market, it's easier to transport goods in the River Niger than to transport them on land. Talking about the economic importance of the River Niger and harnessing it, there has been discussions around dredging River Niger due to its seasonal nature to improve transportation on this river. Recently, an administration in Nigeria has made plans to build a dry port here in Lolo. And let's hope this project will see the light of the day. And still on this issue of dredging, you know, ever since I was a child, I've always heard plans that River Niger will be dredged from Onisha to the Atlantic Ocean, but this has never happened. Even right here in Lolo, I was told that there's a plan to dredge this river from Mali to Nigeria. But all these things are interesting discussions on paper. Right here, nothing is happening. So today is Lolo Market Day. The whole market is bubbling with activities. Almost everybody here is speaking Aosa or something like it. Here, buying, selling, negotiations, exchange of pleasantries, and even gossip are probably what all these market people are talking about. And there is this very outstanding site of cows that are yoked together that are used to move goods around in this place. This should be my first time of seeing such. So some of the goods you can buy here include guinea corn, you can buy fish, rice, millets and fairly used clothes. And then I noticed something about the fruits here, they are very 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 fresh. So first and foremost, on arriving this market, the first thing I had to do was to change some of the sefa I had with me to Naira. And right here, it's very very easy to change sefa to Naira and vice versa than changing your dollars or euros or any other international currency. I will tell you why it's not advisable to change these foreign currencies here before I end this video. So it's now time for us to cross the River Niger to Dole Kaina. So Dole Kaina is the other side of the River Niger here from Lolo. <laughs> I better keep this camera to myself. This gentleman is not finding this very funny. <laughs> right here inside the boat also, we were neither given a life jacket nor did anyone ask for it. We sailed for almost 20 minutes to arrive Dole Kaina. Things are quite busy here just like in Lolo Town. So there's this option of going with a vehicle to Kamba but I prefer to go with a bike because of the speed and I have to wait for vehicles to get through and I didn't have all those time. Which one is going to Kamba? Look at these two huts. These are typical Asian Alsa huts. I would love to sleep in one of them, but a bigger one. Welcome to Kamba, a very important border town here in Kebi. The usual norm with border towns, Kamba is split among Nigeria and Niger. Thanks to the European colonizers, historically, Kamba was part of the Great Songhai Empire until King Kanta became the king of Kebi. The Kamba people have their kids and kin in Nigeria and Niger. And as such, it's very difficult to differentiate between who is Nigeria and who is Nigerian. Not too far from this place is the European border that divides the British Nigeria from the French Niger. Needless to tell you that these two Kambas share a lot 
in common. They're in Tamari, they have the same festivals and so on and so forth. Let's buy some suya meat before we continue our exploration of Kamba town. Kamba does very very well in agriculture. A mega rice mill is situated here and it has played an important role in KB State's government effort to boost rice production. Aside from rice, groundnuts and cotton are other very important cash crops grown here in Kamba. So now we'll be continuing our trip to Agungu which is a very important town in KB State known for fishing festival. Roots around international borders around this particular place in in particular are believed by so many that don't live here to be infested by armed bandits. My friends joked I could be kidnapped when I was coming here. Another interesting thing that happens around this place also is good smuggling. Just like every other border town in Nigeria, smugglers smuggle goods like rice, petrol, used clothes, vegetable oil and so on and so forth. All these are done for economic gains and to avoid paying custom duties on them. One other interesting thing about smuggling in Nigeria is that the crafty methods employed by some of these smugglers is way out of this world. I'll be making another video to discuss some of these very interesting methods that are employed by smugglers to smuggle goods from Nigeria to elsewhere and from elsewhere back to Nigeria. So we had to travel more than 200 kilometers to arrive at Agungu. Agungu was formerly an ancient kingdom before it was eventually conquered by the British crown in 1902. This town is famous for the Agungu Fishing Festival. The festival was first organized to foster unity among two warring KB Kingdom and the Sokoto Caliphate. These two had harbored hostility for more than a century. The conquest and jihad wars in pre-colonial Nigeria had left Sokoto Caliphate and Agungu Kingdom in perpetual enmity. In 1934, however, the visit of the Emir of Sokoto to Agungu marked a remarkable step in the ending of these hostilities and the beginning of friendship of the two kingdoms. During this reconciliatory visit of 1934, a fishing festival was held to welcome this august visit from the Sukuto Caliphate. Since that year till now, this event has been held annually, you know, to mark the beginning of this friendship and it has become an integral part of the Agungu people. The Agungu festival is a four-day festival between February and March. It features water competition like hand fishing, canoe racing, wild dog catching and other traditional practices. Mature men and boys participate in the games while women perform songs and dancing. Unfortunately, even though I had visited in March, I did not meet the events. I had visited the fishing village where festival attendees are lodged. Another important thing here is that the biggest hotel here is called the Grand Fish Hotel, telling you that they have a lot to do with fishing. My next stop is at the Kanta Museum, which was formerly a palace of the Emir of KB. It was built in 1831 and was named after Mohamedou Kanta, founder of the KB Kingdom. It housed the Emir till 1942 when the British government built another palace for the Emir of KB. This ancient palace was eventually now turned into a museum and the intention of this museum is just to illustrate the turbulent history of the KB Kingdom over the centuries. I was not allowed to take pictures inside the museum but there were a lot to see in within of course. What got my attention the most in there were the traditional bulletproof vests which was used in ancient times during warfare. As a lover of horses, the other thing that got my attention was the different breeds of horses that are found in the KB Kingdom. There are weigh over 35 different species in all. Other things in the museum were locally made weapons like spare sword, bow, arrow, local guns, etc. Within the museum, within the museum compound, there were the tombs of the different emirs of the KB Emirate. Within this compound also, there are different Hausa houses that were built in the ancient times and there were silos that they used to preserve food during those epoch times, just like the one we saw at Dole Kaila. So after here, I traveled to Birin KB and from Birin KB, I went to the South in Zamfara. Thanks for watching and like I promised, I will tell you why it is not very convenient to change your US dollars, euros or any other currency aside from Naira or Sefa around here in the border with Niger. The main reason is that not so many people demand for these international currencies around this border town. Most of the local traders would ask for Naira or Sefa and from my experience around these several borders, black market operators are not willing to buy foreign currencies here due to the fact that it might take them a while to sell it. 
So because of this, they will want to buy your dollars or euro at a very 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 cheap rate. It is therefore very very advisable to travel to this place with a local currency. You can change your foreign currencies in Cotonou, Lagos or Abuja or any other place but not in any of these border towns between Nigeria and Niger or Benin and Niger. I'll be very very happy to hear your experience if you've traveled to this place or if you have uh, had any issues changing your foreign currencies around this place.